What's up guys? Welcome to a It's Way Too Yucky to Go Outside episode. Woke up this morning all ready to go out. Thought there might be a good sunrise and it was one of those like nine days in the entire year in southern New Mexico where we have uh, completely all clouds instead of no clouds. It's also like raining and hailing and snowing and sleeting like all in the same time. Like yeah, we're not going outside today. <laughs> we're gonna play guitar, we're gonna drink tea, and I'm gonna play some video games. But before all of that, I figured I'd get some work done, and I have some questions and some comments that I've gotten on some techniques that I do concerning long exposures without filters. And I've done a lot of videos on this before. I One of my most popular videos ever is on this, but it's pretty old and it's pretty long, and I, I doubt very many people watch it anymore. But I talk about this a lot, and I do it a lot in the field, and then I show you guys the final results, and I often skip this part. But one thing that I want to dive a little deeper into that I've never really shown before, uh, that some people have brought up the issue of, well, I don't do long exposures, I don't blend them in post like that because, you know, they look, they don't look the same as, they don't look as organic and as smooth as uh, doing it with a filter in in real life or whatever. And that's true sometimes. There are definitely things uh, that can go wrong with this or that don't look as great, but they are fixable. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's jump into the computer and get started. I guess I should preface this real quick with, uh, to do this, you need to do time lapses or you need to, if you're not gonna do a full time lapse, you at least need to take enough photos to get the length of the overall length of exposure that you're after. So if you're taking uh, a half a second exposures and you want an exposure of two seconds, well then you're gonna need to take four photos at least. You see where I'm going with this? So you can do this. I've done it like this image where this is like a um, hundred and something photos put together. And that makes like for an average of like a five minute exposure. So this would be the same as if I were to put a neutral density filter on that was so dark in whatever conditions and it were to, I were to put it in bulb mode and then open the shutter for five minutes. That's what this would look like. So just keep that in mind and if you are not new here and you know who I am and you know what I do and you've seen a lot of my other videos then you'll know that I do time lapses a lot. And you'll know that this is one of the reasons that I do do time lapses. And if you are new here and you didn't know that, then now you do. I do time lapses for a lot of reasons. But one of the best things that you can get out of a time lapse, aside from the time lapse itself, is the ability to make cool images afterwards that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. All right, so now that you've taken a bunch of images, hopefully more than you need, let's jump into it. All right, so here's a time lapse that I did. And I was really hoping that the light would do more than it did. So the time lapse itself was okay, but in order to salvage it, uh, and get something out of it, I figured. The light was kind of nice on these cliffs. I have an okay composition here. The clouds are okay. Again, everything is just okay. But how can we make it a little more than okay? Well, if we can introduce a little bit of motion blur or a little bit of motion to the clouds, then I think that'll go a long way towards helping this image at least get to uh, a little bit above an okay. So as you can see here, I've got a crap ton of images and you can see I did kind of a day to night and now everything is just gray. So we don't wanna use these. This is the first important part is picking out the images from the time lapses that you do want and that are gonna work for you. So I'm gonna pick the first few images because this is when the light was the best on both the foreground and on the clouds. So the other subtle part of this is figuring out how many you need uh, to get the motion that you want and to get the look that you want. So right now, I actually, if I take too many of these, it's just gonna blur everything out completely. So I'm actually gonna start with, I'll start with 10. Like I said, you can do up to hundreds of these if your computer can handle it. Just keep in mind, the more of these you do, uh, the more your computer is going to struggle. And you can also, so I shoot everything in RAW, of course, because I need the editing. Uh, and I know my computer can handle it. But you can also, like, when I render 
these out for time lapses, uh, I render them into JPEGs after they're all edited and everything. So I have a separate folder right here that has all the JPEG versions in there. You could just as easily do it with the JPEGs and you'll get the same results. It just depends on how much you need to edit after you do this. So once we have them all selected, you can see right here I've got 11 selected. I only wanted 10. Alright, so I've got 10 selected. I'm going to come up here to Tools, Photoshop, Load into Photoshop Layers. Alright, so once that's done, you're going to see them all over here. The first thing we need to do is select them all. So we're going to grab the top one, scroll down on the bottom one, hit Shift, and then click Select Them All. Then we're going to go up here. If you're on an unstable tripod or you're doing not that many of them, like uh, five or less or something, like um, just not that many, then if, if it was like windy or your tripod was super unstable and you, there might have been a shake, you can come up here to image when they're all selected, I mean to edit, and you can do uh, align layers and that will line them all up in case there was any shake or whatever. I'm going to forego that because I know my tripod was steady, I know there wasn't that much wind, and I know that I don't want to wait that long to uh, let it do go through all of, that, all of those. So I'm going to go here, right click, and convert to smart object. Once that's done, I'm going to come up to layer, smart objects, all the way down here to stack mode, and then we're going to go to mean. So if you want to brush off your math class, uh, terminology from <laughs> from grade school or whatever then the mean is the average and that's what we're taking so we're gonna take the exposures and we're gonna average them together to get this simulated average exposure so this is the problem right here that a lot of people I think get to this point and they they kind of stop so if we zoom in here a little bit you will see this right here The reason this is happening is because my interval when I shot the time lapses was kind of far apart because I shot this time lapse in anticipation of it being a day to night time lapse. All that means is I shot a longer elapsed time and my intervals were longer. So the shorter your intervals, the better. And by interval, I mean the time between when you're taking pictures. So for this time lapse, the intervals were something like 8 to 10 seconds or whatever and normally uh, I don't shoot time lapses with that long of intervals for just clouds so if I would have known ahead of time what the light was going to do I would have shortened it up a lot and I would have done anywhere between 1 and 3 second intervals at the longest when you do those shorter intervals you won't have this problem but this is a problem that a lot of people have and I'm going to show you how to fix it Okay, so that looks really uh, staccato and broken and unnatural. So I'm just going to come up here, right click, and I'm just going to do uh, rasterize layer. And then I'm going to hit control. I'm, well, let's make a copy of this first. So control J, we'll make a copy. And then control shift A. So that's going to open me back up into camera raw. There are a number of ways to fix this problem and to add blur. I'm going to go through a couple of them and I'm start with the easiest and just kind of my favorite. So that's the way that we're doing it right now is we're in camera raw. We've got our copy and I'm going to come down here to detail and I'm going to crank up that noise reduction all the way. And then I'm also going to come back here into the basics, basic editing, and I'm going to drop the clarity and the texture just a little bit and by a little bit I mean kind of a lot so that the detail maybe I won't do it as much you want to go pretty high on this but you don't have to go all the way if you don't want to so I'm gonna hit OK so the sky is looking already a lot better so if we just toggle this on and off you can definitely see it took a lot of the definition out and in this case taking the definition out of the sky is okay because that's emulating the smoothness that you would have get that you would have gotten from a long exposure with a filter on but now the uh, ground looks like crap so there's a couple ways we can get around this I'm just gonna mask it 
and I'm going to invert it. And then I'm going to hit B for my brush tool. And I'm going to come up here. I'll go ahead and keep it at 100 for opacity because I know the areas that I want to work with. Basically, it's all of these uh, motion -y bits in the clouds. So I don't want to go too far down. You got to be careful about the line there. I don't want to get the mountains blurred or the trees blurred. But I do want to make sure any part of those staccato-y looking clouds are blurred out. All right, so that's kind of it. That's kind of the simplest way to deal with that. So you can see here that there is a little bit, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of motion blur that's still there. So we didn't really blur that out. We just softened it up a little bit. So if you really want to fix that, again, we could we could come back and tweak it. So I'm going to do Control Shift Alt E. So that'll give me a stamp visible layer. And then now what I want to do is I'm going to turn this into another smart object. And I'm going to come up here to Filter and Blur. And we're going to go to Motion Blur. So Motion Blur gives us the option to, let's look at the clouds here. So you'll see here the tree is uh, nice and blurry. If we click on that, it'll show us the before and then we let go is the after. So what we want is we want to find that area of the clouds that's questionable and that's this area. So before we can see the broken bits there and then after we can see the smoothness. So the cool thing about the motion board here is that you can mimic the, or you can tell tell it which way you want it to do the motion blur. So obviously like that doesn't work because that's not the way the clouds were going. They weren't going vertical, they were going side to side. And they weren't going completely side to side, they were off by just maybe a little bit. So something like that. And then here you can control the distance so you can make that as little or as much as you want. So we're just going to go, I think that looks good. So the power of smart objects and the reason why I'm doing a smart object here is because I can go back and I can change that. If you just apply the filter without the smart object, then there's no way to go back and tweak the filter. But now I can just double click on the smart filters on the motion blur and there it is, pops right back up and I can retweak it. So that's super powerful. So now I'm just going to come click on the mask here and with that selected I'm going to hit control I to invert it and then I'm just going to with my brush tool again paint in the areas that I want to fix again. Because I don't think the whole sky needs more of that, just the areas where the clouds were looking a little bit broken. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good. Now all of the basic long exposure editing is done. So now I can resume editing the regular way that I would edit the photo. So I'm just going to do another uh, layer here, Control shift alt e and then Control shift a That's going to open it back up into Camera Raw. And then from here, if you have your presets or whatever, you know, you can come over here and put the presets on. So I might do that real quick. I kind of like this one. I'm going to do OK with that and then I'm going to come back in here and just mess around with my edit a little bit until I get it the way that I want it. Alright, so there it is, a before and after of the actual edit. And then go ahead and crop it however you want. If you want your Instagram 4x5 or your square or whatever. There it is. Alright, so this technique works really well, obviously, with 
sky and with clouds and I do it a lot. It also, the other most popular thing to do it with is waterfalls. And I've done that recently where I took you guys out and shot with my phone with the S21. Uh, so it doesn't matter what camera you're using, whether you're using a phone or a DSLR or mirrorless or medium format or point shoot or whatever. And it doesn't really matter what the subject is as long as, you know, for landscape stuff, you got clouds and you got waterfalls, but you've also got people. So if you're in big cities and you're taking lots of images uh, and you want to blur those people out, uh, this is one of the great ways to do that, or at least m make them, you know, more in more discreet, more uh, interesting, and less peopley looking. <laughs> you can also do it with car trails. I've done that a lot too. Where if you want to, if you didn't get a long enough car trail, and again, if you're in a city where there's a lot of cars going by, which I am not. <laughs> There's like five people that live in this town. So yeah, give that a go and think about that the next time you're out and you don't have filters. So if you want to know more about time lapses and other editing techniques and all that kind of stuff or any other photography related stuff and you made it this far, you should definitely subscribe to the channel because I've got new videos every week. And at this point, I think I've got like over 300 something videos already. So I've done a lot of videos on how to make time lapses, uh, editing techniques and camera techniques, filters, how to use filters if you do have them and you do want them. A lot of people think this is way too much time to spend, uh, you know, and they'd rather just do it in the camera, and that's cool. And I have filters and I use them too. So there's something for everybody. <laughs> Alright, well that's enough work for me today on this super rarely crappy New Mexico weather. It's time to get to some video games and some second breakfast. It's definitely second breakfast time. It's 9 o'clock in the morning already. Yeah, definitely second breakfast time. So hit that like button if this video helped you out or if you enjoyed it at all because that's what helps me out and I really appreciate it. Oh, and if you like those presets and you like presets or anything like that, you should check mine out down below. I made them for me and I love them and you guys appear to love them too. So super stoked to be able to share those with you. And that's really it because my cat is like banging the door down. He's about ready to burst through the door because he wants second breakfast too. So that's it for today. Leave your questions, comments down below, and I will definitely answer them like I always do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.